Every Linux user has used a man page at least once or twice, but have you ever considered that you might not be using them in the most efficient way possible? So that's what I'm going to be looking at today. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if somehow you're a Linux user and you don't know how to use a man page, I guess we can just go over that briefly to begin the video. So I'll bring up a man page for just anything. So the way you do this is you write the man command and then you write the thing you want to actually look at the man page for. So let's go with say make dir for example. So that brings up the man page. So if we want to scroll through this, we can use the up and down arrow keys or if you're a Vim user, you can use the J and the K keys. So let's say we want to search for something in here. So if we do slash, and then let's say we want to look at this dash P option in here, for example. So we write slash dash P, that will then perform a regex search for that example. And as we can see down here, it tells us which line this is on. So if we press N, that will then try to cycle through each of the lines that contains that, and then shift N will cycle backwards. But because there is only one line that contains dash P, this isn't actually going to do anything. So let's say we wanted to search for something that has a bit more occurrences. Like let's say we want to search for the letter I. So if we press slash I, this will take us to the first occurrence of the letter I, which in this case is the first line. And then if we press N, this will then cycle through each of those lines. And then shift N will obviously cycle backwards. So if you want to cycle the opposite way, starting from the bottom, then having N cycle backwards, we can use the question mark. So if we do the same thing here, this will take us down to the last occurrence of I, which in this case is in GNU Core Utils. Then we press N, that will then take us upwards. We press Shift N, that will take us down. Okay, so everyone probably knows that basic, basic usage of a man page, but there are some other ways that you can use it. And I've got this article from OS Technics by SK that talks about some of those alternative usages. So this first part in here is what I just went over just now. So this is the basic usage and we'll go down to the next part. So we can combine a man page with grep and some of the options that come with a man page to actually do something cool. So if you want to search within the short description and the name of the actual program, instead of searching within the options of it, we can use the dash K option. So if we just look at the man page for man, yes, man has a man page in case you weren't sure. So this is the manual page for the manual page program. So we look for the dash K option. Let's see if we can actually find it. This is a massive man page. So let's see. This will search the short manual page description for keywords and display any matches. So let's say we wanted to use that with, say, the word directory. So this will search through all of my programs, listing out everything that has directory in its short description. So in this case, there is a ton of programs. So this in and of itself isn't super useful. But what if we were to also combine this with grep? So let's say we do this. So we pipe this into grep and then we can use the dash E option, which is the extended regex option. And then just the basic regex. I think capital E might be extended regex. Either way, this will do a regex search. And then let's say we want to search for create. So we want to find everything that says directory in its description. And we want to find everything that has create in its description as well. So we run that. And as we can see in here, I'll clear the screen so it's a bit easy to see it. So now there's far, far fewer things. So we've got this curl opt one, this lib SSH one, and then make der, make der at, make d temp, and all these other ones. So if we wanted to know how to create a directory, we can see in here, so make der says create a directory. So we can probably assume that that is probably what we want or make dir at is also another option. I don't know what make dir at does, but then once you know you have these two options, you can then actually look more in depth at the man page. So let's say we want to look at make dir at. So this is the programs manual, blah, 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 blah. Make dir at, make a directory relative to the directory file descriptor. I don't know exactly what this is. Is this some sort of C function or something? I don't know. But once you actually have these more shortened down lists, you can actually 
look at the man pages in depth and be like, okay, what is the exact program that I need to use right now? So there is some other stuff we can do with this. Let's have a further look through this article. So as I showed you before, you can search forward using the slash option. So we can say in this case for mount in this case, we've got slash bind. So this will search forward for the word bind. You can also search backwards with the question mark sign. But if you just want to show lines that have the thing that you search for and nothing else, we can use the ampersand. So if we go uh, man make der, and we do ampersand and let's say dash Z. So if you think a program might have this option, but you can't exactly remember and you don't really care about anything else that's available, you can use the ampersand option and this will show you nothing but that line. So this isn't useful a lot of the time, but there will be occasions where you're like, okay, I think this might have this option, but I can't remember. And I don't really care about the rest of the man page. Just show me this option. So that's pretty much the only time I could think of where you'd want to use that. Maybe you can think of another use for it, but for me, that's the only thing I can come up with. So let's see, what else do we have? So now we have some more grepping. So this is a different example than what we had before. So what we're doing here, so we uh, run the man page for this, that will bring up just the man page. Okay, so if we run the man page, pipe that into grep, and then go dash E, and then whatever we want to search for. Like, let's say we want to search for file mode. So what this is going to do is it's going to search through the man page for the word file mode, and it'll just show the lines that contain that. So as we can see, that is a option that is available in there. So let's see what the article says about this. So this is being used in here with an option. So that is useful for the same reasons the ampersand is useful, but there is something else we can do with this. So grep also has the option to show the lines after the matching lines. So if we run this command instead, so man make dir, pipe that into grep dash e, searching for the dash m again, but this time also giving the dash a option and then two. So what dash a does is it will say, find the matching line and then print this number of lines after it. So in this case, we run this, we have the option dash M and also the description for it. So obviously this might show extra stuff or it might not show everything, but this is a way that you can search for an option and also get the actual output after the option. So I'll just show you the man page for grep just so I can be 100% sure that's correct. So dash A. So print num lines of trailing context after matching lines. So yeah, basically, as I said, it will print the lines after the matching line as well. So if we were to do something that it shows up more times like I, that will basically print out the entire man page pretty much. So let's go on to the next point. So this is where we get into something interesting that you can do with less. So you've probably never even considered that less has options, but it does. So if you didn't realize before, the actual pager for man is basically just less. I think it actually is less. I don't think it pulls from your default pager. I think it actually just uses less, but I might be wrong there. At least on my system, it's using less. Anyway, so if we pipe a man page into less, it doesn't actually do anything different. So we do that, we just have basically the same man page. But there is something we can do with this. So less has an interesting option. So we go into the man page for that, and I'll see if I can find it. It's like down near the bottom. So if we pass in a plus, this will basically tell less to run this command as soon as you open up the program. So let's see what happens if we were to do something with this. So let's say we wanted to do plus and then run the command slash dash M. This is gonna do something really interesting. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna run the man page for make dir. It's gonna pipe that all into less. And then once it's in less, the first thing that less is gonna do is search for the string dash M. So we run that and we jump instantly to that option. So this is really useful if you already know the option you want, but you wanna know exactly what it does. So let's say someone gives you a Pac-Man con, for example, that is Pac-Man dash SYU. So you wanna know what each of those options do. So you can run man Pac-Man, pipe that into less, 
then go plus slash dash y. So this will search for the dash y option. As we can see, that will then jump straight to where we actually have that. And because it's just performing a search, if this isn't the correct dash y option, so we scroll up a bit, if we're using dash s, this would be what we're looking for. But let's say we actually wanted the one for dash f. So we can then actually cycle through these. So because it's just running the search command, it works exactly the way that you would have searched before. So nothing extra happens here. It just jumps directly to your search parameter. It's just a normal search that you could have done by just writing slash instead. So let's see what else we have in here. So this is just a few other options of just doing that. Now, this isn't too interesting in here. You can pipe the, or you can redirect the man page out to a separate file if you really want to. So we go, man pack man pipe, well not pipe, to redirect that into file.txt. Then if we go v file.txt, that's my alias for vim, nothing special there. You can obviously just use anything. You could use a pager if you really wanted to. Here we go, we just have the man page for pacman now. Nothing special here. I don't really know why you'd want to do this unless you wanted to like post the man page somewhere. But if you really want to redirect it to a file, that's an option. But everything that you wanted to do with like grep and all that, you could just do without bothering to actually send it to a file, but it's your system, do what you want. So this next option in here. So it is also possible to obtain a simpler version of a man page without backspaces and underscores using the following command. Let's see what this actually does. So I haven't actually run this one yet, so I'm not sure what it will do. So, okay, that runs it for the mount command. So v mount.txt. And what did that do? I, I don't even know. Let's just get the one without that option so I can actually see what it does. Okay, v mount. Why am I rewriting it? Uh, did that do something? Let me know if that did something. I think it might have reformatted some stuff, but I can't be sure. Once again, like with the previous redirection, you probably aren't ever going to do that. But if you really wanted to, then I guess that's an option. So as I mentioned before, you can run man directly on man. So that will bring up the man page for man. The man, man, man. Man, 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 man. There we go. That's the man page for man. But you can also do some other stuff. So if we go man dash K, we can find every program that has man in its description. So in this case, there is a lot of them because man is a part of the word manage and manage is used for a lot of Linux programs. So that's not super useful, but there's also one other thing. So I didn't know about this, but there is this other sort of format for manual pages called info pages. Nobody uses them, but a lot of programs actually do have them. I've, at least I've never heard of anyone using them. So if we go info man, this is like a newer sort of format for manual pages. It's actually kind of nice because if you do info with the dash dash vi keys, then you can use vim keys in here just like you could with using less. There's nothing too crazy about this really. You can do regex searches, everything you could do with a normal man page. But with this new sort of format, at least on the pages that make use of it. So if we look at the info page for info, this has a cool sort of format where you can actually do things like interact with it. So these are actually links to different parts of the info page. So if we hover over one of these and press enter on that, that will jump to this page. So this is a newer sort of format for manual pages, but most projects either literally print out the help page from the actual code or just uses a man page. So this might exist, but most people don't actually use this format. But I think Info just reads regular man pages as well. So if we go info for LF, yeah, this will just bring up the actual man page. So it looks like it'll just parse man pages just the same, even if it doesn't have an info page. Let's just bring up some other random thing, Ranger. Do I have Ranger still installed? Yes, I do. Yeah, it looks like it'll just read the man page if there's no info page available. So I think that might be pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button, leave me a comment down below, letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. 
and it will let me know that people actually want to see videos like this where I just go over an article. These videos are very, very simple videos to make. I'm not going to be doing tons and tons of them, obviously, but occasionally I'll run into something where I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. I feel like more people should know about this. If you do want to read through the article yourself, though, I will leave a link to this down in the description down below. So go check that out for yourself. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check out my library links. That'll be down below. And also, if you want to chat with me, my Discord will also be down below. I'm in there most days, so feel free to send me a message. I've noticed that it's been growing quite a bit lately, and that is absolutely awesome. So up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, that's where you go to do that. And also my Twitter and my Mastodon. So those are the best places to actually get video updates because YouTube can never be trusted to actually push video updates. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. And I'm out.